Hey everybody, welcome back. In an earlier video, we talked about the central limit theorem, and here's how that worked. It said that if you're going to take a random sample from some population and calculate some sample statistic from that, like the sample average, you should treat that sample statistic like a random variable, because it came from a random sample. Now, like all random variables, it has a probability distribution. And what the central limit theorem says is, your sample average has a normal distribution. It doesn't matter what the parent population's distribution was. It could have been U-shaped, it could be skewed, it could be binary. But whatever that distribution is, as long as your sample size is large enough, the range of all the sample averages you might have taken from that will be distributed, will be distributed normally. And if the parent population itself had a normal distribution, then it really doesn't matter what your sample size is. It doesn't have to be large enough. It can be anything. The distribution of all the possible sample averages you could take, that's normal as well. It's a very powerful theorem. Now, the central limit theorem goes actually even a little bit farther. Not only does it say that the distribution of all the possible sample averages will be normal, but that it'll be an unbiased estimate of the true population mean, and that it's going to be a pretty precise estimate. The range of possible values of sample averages you might get is going to have this particular standard deviation. It's called a standard error, and it's related to the parent population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So let's see how this works in practice. Here, we sample from a population and this is supposed to be uh, conveying something like income. And if we have an income of $30,000 and a standard deviation of 5000 then we might take a sample from here of however many observations, and we're going to collect, um, calculate one particular sample average. But it's one from a whole range of possible sample averages that we could have taken, and that range of possible sample averages is given by this distribution. So here's an example of how to use that. Let's say that we have distribution of income. It's distributed normally with a mean of 30,000 and a standard deviation of 5,000. And now somebody draws a sample of size 25. What's the probability that that mean that you calculate from your particular sample has an average income of $20,000 or less? Okay. Now, I'm not saying what's the probability that any one particular person has an income less than 20000 Then we would be sampling from this distribution. Instead, the question asks, what's the probability that we'd get a sample average that's less than 20000 So rather than looking at the distribution of x's, we need to be looking at the distribution of x bars. Well, that's exactly what the central limit theorem tells us. It tells us what the distribution of x bars is going to be. So just to summarize, we have the distribution from the parent population. This is income in the US. We take a sample of size 25. The central limit theorem says, since we're sampling from a normal, the distribution of x bars is also going to be normal. It's going to be unbiased, so I know that it's going to be centered over 30,000. And the standard deviation of all the possible sample averages we might calculate, that has a standard deviation equal to 5,000, this guy here, divided by the square root of the sample size. In other words, divided by the square root of 25. What this means then is that the distribution of sample averages is normal, with a mean of 30,000 and a standard deviation of square root of 25 is 5, so 5,000 divided by 5 is 1,000. And so now I can answer all kinds of probability questions that relate to x bar because I know exactly how it's distributed. Okay, so now it's just a normal probability question. You can ignore the fact that it's an x bar. Right? So if I just said, hey, listen, you've got, you've got some variable x. It's distributed normally with a mean of 30,000 and a standard deviation of 1,000. 
what's the probability that x is less than 20? You could just do that in Excel. So the fact that this guy is now an x bar, now that becomes irrelevant because we know exactly how that thing is distributed. So we can just pull out Excel and make this calculation. Let's do that right now. So I've pulled up Excel and I've just typed myself some reminders. I'm telling myself what the distribution of x bar is and then the question that we want to answer, which is what is the probability that x bar, our random variable, is less than 20,000? Now this is, uh, we're drawing from a normal and we have a less than sign. So this is really easy for Excel. We just start off with an equal sign and then we do norm dot dist because we're drawing from a normal distribution and then a parentheses and then Excel prompts us it wants the particular value of X that we're talking about that's 20,000 the mean that we're drawing from we're pulling from this distribution now this distribution of X bars not the distribution of X so it's got a mean of 30,000 and a standard deviation that's only 1,000. It's a lot smaller than the parent distribution. Finally, we're going to do cumulative, so we want true. Close those parentheses and hit enter. Essentially, what this is telling us is that the probability that we would have a sample average of 25 people and that sample average is less than $20,000, it's essentially zero. It's zero and then 23 zeros and then and then a seven. So it's it's zero. Well, let's, uh, let's do a couple more. So here's a different variation on that same problem. We've got our distribution of incomes in the United States, which we're assuming is normal with a mean of 30,000, standard deviation of 5,000. We draw a sample of 25 people, which means that any sample average that we calculate is going to have this particular distribution. Right? It's unbiased and it's much more narrowly clustered around the population mean of 30,000. Now what's the probability that you would draw 25 people and calculate that sample average and this time they'd be a little bit more wealthy on average than 30,000. So what is the probability that X bar is greater than 31,000? Now we know that X bar is distributed normally so Excel can do this calculation for us really easily. The only complication with Excel is that Excel really doesn't like greater than signs. See, Excel can tell us very easily what the probability that some number is less than 31,000, but greater thans are a little bit more difficult. So we just need to use the rule of complements. Right? So we've got some distribution. It's centered over 30. But we want to know the probability that we're bigger than 31 but Excel can only tell us probabilities less than 31. So this guy, the probability of this guy is really just one minus this whole probability. So what we need to do is answer this question by saying one minus the probability that X bar is less than 31,000. And that we can do very easily in Excel. Let's pull it up right now. So how do we calculate the probability that some random variable is bigger than 31,000? We do one minus the probability that it's less than 31,000. So 31,000. The mean that we're sampling from, this is our distribution. The standard deviation of that distribution. And then we end with a true. You hit enter and we get 15.8%, so roughly 16%. Now what does that mean in English? What that means is, even though the, the average uh, income for the United States is $30,000 with a um, population standard deviation of 5,000, the chances of us drawing a sample of 25 folks and getting a sample average of 31,000 is only 16% or 15.8%. Now let's do one final variation on this same problem. We have income in the US that's distributed normally with a mean of 30,000 and a standard deviation of 5,000. So something like that. 
So a 95% interval would be, uh, excuse me, 68% uh, interval would be uh, 25 and 35. A 95% interval would be, well, it would be plus and minus two standard deviations. So we'd be, we'd be out here. All right, so each standard deviation is 5,000. Two of those is 10,000. So between 40,000 and 20,000, this probability is 95%. Now just to be like clear, this is the 95% probability that we would just pull one person and they would have an income between 20,000 and 40,000. Now I want to know what can I expect from a sample of 25 people. Right, so what can I expect from the average income of those 25 people? Those 25 people's income will be distributed normally with a standard deviation of 1,000. Okay. So those people's sample averages will still be centered over 30, but now it has got a much tighter distribution. Now the empirical rule is still going to apply that 95% of observations should lie within plus and minus one standard deviation. Just the standard deviation of x bars is now 1,000. Right, so 95% should lie within two standard deviations. So it should be 32 and subtracting 2,000, 28,000. Now let's verify that in Excel. Now if you need a reminder on how to calculate these probabilities, I've got an entire video. Um, there should be a banner, a link somewhere up there on your screen. Uh, let's just do this one real quick. So the probability that some random variable that's distributed like this is between these two numbers, we need to do this in two steps. So all equations start off with an equal sign. And now we do the probability that x is less than 32,000. So tell it 32,000 the mean of its distribution, the standard deviation of its distribution, then we put true. Now that just tells us the probability that we're less than 32,000. We need to now subtract off the probability that we're less than 28, which just leaves us with the probability in between those two numbers. So we keep typing norm.dist 28,000 from a population of 30,000, standard deviation of 1,000, true. Close that parentheses, hit enter, and we get 95%. It also confirms the fact that our sampling distribution had a much tighter distribution than the parent population did. Parent population's standard deviation was 5,000. The distribution of sample averages is only 1,000. Okay, so I think you know enough now to answer some probability questions about sample averages. Um, that's it for now. Thanks for listening.